Are you dreaming of taking a trip to a far-off exotic place? Maybe hiking the hills of the Scottish Highlands. If you're looking into taking a National Geographic vacation, you know they don't come cheap. In this video, I'll show whether Nat Geo delivered, or not, on what they state in their literature on the trip we just took, the Scotland hiking adventure from the Highlands to the Islands. Let's do this. As always, I received no compensation from Nat Geo or anyone else for making this video. For decades, I've been listening to the Outdoor Station podcast that originates in the UK and heard legends about how great the hiking is in Scotland. When some friends invited us along with them on the National Geographic Scotland hiking tour, my wife and I jumped at the chance. We went the first week of June, 2023, early enough to avoid the crowds of July and August, but late enough that supposedly the midges have died down a bit by then. First of all, this is classified by National Geographic as a moderately strenuous trip, with daily distances from 3 to 9 miles with moderate to steep grades. We hike typically about 5 to 6 miles per day, with an average elevation gain of about 8 to 900 feet. It's likely no accident that the hikes start out on the easier side and build to a crescendo on the last day where we climbed 2,000 feet over three miles and descended along the same route. Nobody had to bail on any of the hikes, but a few people stayed back the last day and went shopping. They seemed to be fatigued from the cumulative effects of daily hikes for a full week. I would estimate the average age in our group at about 60, so not surprising that some folks are going to get worn down by the end of the week. No shame in that. We were incredibly lucky with the weather, mid-60s with sunshine every day. If we had had several days of cold rain, there might have been a few more dropouts. The brochure touts secluded locks and heather-draped hillsides, and I have to say they delivered on that front. Loch Lomond, Ben Nevis, the Isle of Skye, we hit most of the top scenic destinations in Scotland outside of the Cairngorms. Most of the folks I talked to said the Quirang hike on northern Skye was the scenic highlight. But honestly, it's like picking your favorite candy. They're all good. It's not just about trudging up and down hills. Everyone loved the sheep everywhere, and the highland cows were a huge hit. The first hike was down the Royal Mile in Edinburgh, so there was some urban culture exploration as well. This was advertised as a stroll through winding wines and clandestine closes. I'm not sure we went anywhere clandestine, but we did hit a couple of spots that we didn't know were there, despite our two days in town prior to the start of the tour. Nat Geo states, National Geographic expert and expedition leader, team guides will join us. Guides can make or break a trip, and ours were top-notch. The leader, Ray, was a certified mountaineering guide with extensive knowledge of the trails, geography, history, flora, and fauna that we saw along the way. He had two assistants that made sure everyone was safe, happy, and most importantly, well-fed. Michael, the Nat Geo expert, is an accomplished photographer and writer for the magazine and gave two fascinating and information-packed talks. I felt privileged to hike alongside him and pepper him with all sorts of questions about photography, travel, and the like. Our hike along the base of Ben Nevis to a waterfall was led by an executive from the John Muir Trust that manages a big chunk of land in the area. The midges were a bit pesky that morning, but she did a great job of filling us in on the land management issues in the area. A highlight for me was the storyteller and harpist 
who regaled us with tales of the Selkies and the Glencoe Massacre. She was also a talented musician, and her talent made for one of the most entertaining evenings of the trip. Of course, a local malt whiskey made the evening merry. The mandatory malt whiskey distillery tour was not self-guided. We had a representative of the distillery give us a private tour of the entire facility and let a guided tasting of three fine examples of their product. This place was really amazing. I would have liked to spend an evening at their bar made out of a still kettle. Our hotels provided on this trip were stellar. The Brunsfield in Edinburgh was okay, but it has a great location, a short walk to the Royal Mile. The King's House was in spectacular surroundings, nestled between mountains along the West Highland Way. The Skabost was a stunning setting along the coast of Skye, and the service there was nothing short of world class. The Phoneb Castle had the most impressive architecture, as the name suggests, but the location above the loch and next to the dam was all that one could ask for. Sorry if I seem to be using all the positive adjectives in my vocabulary, but the accommodations on this trip were honestly exceptional. I've traveled many times to England prior to this trip and never had a great meal there, so my expectations for Scotland food were low. But was I ever pleasantly surprised. All the meals for the trip were provided by the hotels we stayed at, including the picnic lunch bags. So really, my comments on the food are just an extension of the quality of the accommodations. Meal choices were a subset of the full hotel menu, typically with three choices each for appetizer, entree, and dessert. Yes, there was plenty of opportunities to consume haggis, which by the end of the trip I actually took a liking to. All I can say is I have never been so well fed in my life. The only hookup was the ordering and distribution of the bag lunches was sometimes a bit chaotic and error prone. Didn't always end up with what I asked for. I learned that a Scottish egg salad sandwich is just as yucky as an American version. But when you've been out hiking all day, you'll eat pretty much anything. There was a daily cocktail hour before dinner with drinks provided by Nat Geo. When in Scotland, you gotta do the malt of the month. The Nat Geo literature doesn't say much about transportation other than that it's provided. For what it's worth, you go by bus, which in my opinion is the best way to travel for this type of trip. It's not a rundown school bus. It's a modern coach with reclining seats overhead storage for daily needs like your backpack, your lunch, your sandals, etc. And ours even had Wi-Fi. Your luggage rides in the back storage compartment. It does not have a toilet. And most of the trailheads did not have toilets. So you do have to practice good bladder management. The nice thing about travel by bus is several of our hikes were one way. So the bus dropped us off at the start and was waiting for us at the end. The typical day had a couple of hours riding the bus. The days that were higher mileage included a stop to break up the sitting, such as at Eileen Donan Castle. The guides will tell you that having a skilled and savvy bus driver is key, and ours was that. I didn't see him use Google Maps. He seemed to know exactly how to get to all of our stops. So, bottom line for what it's worth, transportation, A1. Nat Geo pushes trip insurance really hard. If you're experiencing health issues that might jeopardize your trip, it's probably a good idea. But we opted instead to get there two days early to give us a travel buffer in case of airline problems. 
It also gave us time to get over our jet lag, which in retrospect was worthwhile. Yes, there's a couple days of hotel and meals to add to your tab, but honestly, it's a lot less than buying trip insurance. We did make the mistake of not booking our extra days in the hotel through Nat Geo because we didn't know any better. If you want them to pick you up at the airport, you must book those extra days through them and not on your own. Do bring back a bottle of scotch, despite the hassles of getting it through security. Prices are best at the duty-free shop at the Edinburgh airport, and they package it up to make sure it makes it through all the TSA inspections. So, were we glad we took this trip? Nat Geo definitely delivered what they said they would in their descriptions, so most definitely glad we went. And special thanks to our good friends Luann and Tom, who graciously invited us to come along with them, and did so much of the prep work before the trip. Would I do another Nat Geo trip? I think where they shine are the destinations where the logistics are more challenging. So if I was going to another destination where trying to arrange all the transport was going to be too stressful, I think I'd go with Nagio. With all their knowledge of the areas and culture, it also makes it easier to let them decide what the top sites are, instead of trying to figure it out myself. If you've seen some of my backpacking videos, you know that I do a fair amount of trip leading, so I know just how much work it is to set up an expedition. That's it! I hope this video helps you in your vacation decision making. If it did, please leave me a comment down below, or click the like button, or even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and happy travels!